Readers. Welcome to Writing Group Redux, my weekly video where I go over everything that we talked about in our two-hour writing group in 10 minutes or less. So if you've always wanted to join a writing group but just don't have the time, this is definitely the series for you. Every single week we'll be covering a really useful and actionable set of topics or ideas and you'll be able to follow along with us. And if you do live in Northern California, I would love for you to join our writing group and you can comment below or contact me and we'll make sure that that happens. So let's get started right away. Today we talked about writing scenes and then using scenes to structure our novel. So one of my writers had asked for advice on outlining and quite honestly for them it's a little bit early in the game but this whole idea of structuring your novel using the idea of scenes is starting to move us in that correct direction. So last week I had everyone write one scene and we then used that to explain what a scene actually is and does. So what is a scene? A scene is one moment in time uh, featuring your character being active. A scene is only useful if it moves the action forward, if it establishes some vital information, and if it kind of shows something crucial happening. It's also best if there's some kind of a conflict, either internal, so the character against themselves, or external, uh, the character versus something that's in their general environment, or direct between two characters, having you know a heated discussion or a fight, or actually even a love scene, anything like that would be kind of person to person kind of action. Ask yourself, why am I writing this scene? What use does this scene have within the greater context of my novel? And eventually you can start asking yourself about the causality. So once you've written a few different scenes, where does this scene fit versus that scene? And that's when you're going to start to think about causality. So this scene happens because this happened in that scene. Or I wrote this in this scene, therefore I'm going to have to write another scene between this person and that person to kind of move things forward and answer some of the questions that have been raised in my scene. So we're starting to see that we have a story arc. So now that I'm talking about the story arc, we're going to move from scene to structure. So I said I had a simple structure that I use and that is the three act structure. The three act structure was invented by Aristotle, who's a Greek philosopher, so it's over 2000 years old. It's been tested time and time again, so that tells you that it works. However, if you think it's a little bit too restrictive, if there's something else that you would rather do, go ahead and do that, but it's good for you to know that this exists and how it works so that you can riff on it or use it or choose to ignore it altogether. But if you're a beginning writer, probably best to use it. So three act structure, act number one. Act number one is the setup. The setup is that part where you start to meet your character, figure out the setting, find the initial problem that is kind of starting to motivate your character, and also a few little second guessing, some doubts that your character is probably going to have. So for example, in Harry Potter, you'll see that you get the setup that Harry Potter is this boy living with these muggles. He has a feeling that there's something different about him, but he has lots of doubts as well. He's been a little bit abused by his aunt and uncle. He doesn't know what else to do. Now there comes a moment or a, an event which propels him without any kind of choice. It propels him into action. And that event is called your inciting incident. The inciting incident is that thing that happens. So in Harry Potter's case, uh, the fact that these letters start to come um, and that he gets the invitation to go to Hogwarts, that inciting incident makes it impossible to ignore and impossible to go back to the way things were before. In The Wizard of Oz, for example, the inciting incident is going to be that Dorothy's house basically gets swept up in a tornado. She has no choice but to go to Oz on her quest and to you know do all of the learning and the character development that she does at that point. A little piece of advice is give all of that action some urgency. So whether that is temporal urgency, like your character is meant to be leaving for somewhere, 
or they're dying or um, you know their dog is lost and they need to find them before nightfall you know any of those things would be uh, an urgency creating thing and I really recommend that for the pacing because if not this act can get too long and really in the greater scheme of things this act is meant to be one quarter of the length of your novel the second act in this three act structure will be the confrontation a lot of people say that writing the middle of a book is really difficult well this is your whole middle it's about half of the length of the book and actually if you think of it this way in terms of the confrontation act it makes it a lot easier. This is where most of the things happen in your novel. So think of all of those scenes, you're having scene, 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 which really means conflict, 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 obstacle, obstacle. So it's all these things happening. If your character was a little bit miserable before in act one, this is where you're doing all of these things to make them even more miserable than ever. Like the reader needs to think that maybe their quest is actually not gonna work out. Maybe they're not gonna get what they wanted. Maybe they're not going to get to the result that we've been set up to hope for. And that's really great. And kind of three quarters through this act is where you throw in a monkey wrench throw in a twist that is going to really turn everything that the reader thought was going to happen upside down. And that can be anything, but that's something that happens to them. Just like the inciting incident, these are things that are one of the rare parts of your book that are actually driven by an outside force as opposed to actions by your characters. Basically your characters moving along, doing all these things to get forward and all of a sudden their car blows up or all of a sudden uh, they go to find this thing and it's not there. You know, things like that that happen to them and are then going to lead to, you know, the climax of this second act. Act three is when you're tying up loose ends. So this is the, as we go towards the ending, act three is where everything is going to be kind of tied up or actually people call it the denouement, which in French means the detaching, it's when you're going to untie all of the knots, all of the mysteries that have been brought together, all of these conflicts are going to go towards some kind of resolution. That doesn't mean that everything's hunky-dory and that you're going to have necessarily a happy ending, but we are trying to move these towards a conclusion that feels right. Even structurally, you need to have your pacing move you towards that ending. So if you were to look at a three-act structure, um, as a drawing, it would look like a triangle. Um, basically, it would look like a chart where you have kind of a long side of the triangle is here, and this is part one going up, act one, all the way to act two that starts here, act two. Here's the twist. Here's the kind of thing that happens. It's like, ooh, what's happening? Here's the climax of act two. And then we're moving towards more little obstacles to the climax of act three. And then we're going down off camera, we're going down to the denouement and to the end. Um, so, th and that's a much shorter little side here, that part of it. So once you have that climax and once you have the thing where things are solving themselves, your book better end pretty quickly. We don't wanna tag on a bunch of new issues and problems or anything like that. Like this is where it ends. So if there's anything else you wanted to put in, find a place before to add it to. So that's it, as a homework assignment, I told my writers to write one more scene and then to try to see how those scenes fit between this three act structure and then to just kind of indicate and write on note cards a few other scenes that would work to be the setup, the confrontation scenes and the ending denouement scenes. So that's what they're doing and then we're gonna take that stuff and next time we can actually talk about doing a full outline for our novel. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will see you all next week. And in the meantime, happy writing.